Okay, welcome back. We are talking about programming in R and using that as a uh, tool to make uh, cool generative art. This is part of my robust tools uh, class that I'm running online during, to, due to the uh, delightful <laughs> pandemic that we're all living with. And because things are so terrible in the rest of the world, I thought that uh, it would be nice to introduce a lot of our programming concepts by making pretty pictures. So we're aiming to make pretty pictures like this, and I've gone through a whole lot of programming concepts like uh, lists and uh, tibbles and random numbers, and I've talked about vectors and loops and uh, if statements, and there will be more uh, content that I provide later on about some of these concepts, fleshing them out, but what I've tried to do is introduce you to the very basics of them in a slightly more fun context, uh, and it seems like we're getting pretty close. So if I go over to my RStudio Cloud project, uh, our goal, if you remember, is to create this, and where we're up to is that. So let's have a, let's try and get these two closer to side by side. So this, this is what we've created and this was our, our goal. So we seem to be doing better, like we've got the overall shape right, we've got the kind of swirliness and uh, the, the trick of kind of uh, twisting the uh, curl noise step in, in a third dimension seems to have done the trick to getting something nice. But we're not doing so well on the colors. So the colors here in the original are shaded. Um, and they seem to shade along a single line. So if you pick one line and just trace it out, it kind of, you can find some of them that start, this is a good one, it starts out light over here and goes dark, darker along there. So there's a variable that we can, we're using to, to govern the color of our lines and it seems to be changing as, as we go. Okay, so how can we do that? Let's go back to our code and to our art, which we will find over here. Okay, so there's the artwork. Let's bring the code back. So truth is, the, the code that we've got where we set it up, we've got a whole bunch of packages, we've got parameters for our art, um, we've got the process of sequentially building it, blah, 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 we've got our, there's our nice loop, there's our termination criterion for stopping the loop, etc. Um, and we've even got some code to start drawing it. So really what we want to do at this point is think about ways of um, like improving the way that we manage the color. And we know some of that from our ggplot um, uh, stuff when, when we're doing data visualization, right? All I have to do is add another aesthetic. So let's say for the moment, let's try. I did promise, I did, didn't promise, but I mentioned before that the color, so that the, the way that we were able to uh, create this shape um, in the last uh, um, video, was by twisting things in the Z dimension. So just to give a bit of a sense of it, let's, uh, I'll color each line, each point, uh, we'll color it by um, its coordinates in the Z dimension. We'll just see what that does. So we run this and we get, okay. So we get something and you can see that this is actually uh, giving us a little bit of information about, okay, so the things over here have moved, um, uh, so things have gone either, they started at zero, they've gone either up or down, so these points over here have moved for like up in the Z dimension, these ones went down and so on. Um, that's part of what we're looking for, but it doesn't seem to give us exactly the plot, uh, the artwork we were hoping for, though admittedly this is kind of pretty. Unfortunately, one thing that's gone getting under my skin, you can only see part of it because my head's in the way, but the the ggplot scale has reasserted itself. Hopefully, I'll give you a second, this is sort of a mini, mini test. If you can remember how to make that go away. Um, do, 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 do. It was in the, it was in something. 
um, I think it was in the glamour graphics section. If we, um, actually not a hundred percent sure I covered it. So in case I didn't, here's how you do it. <laughs> Show legend equals false. Basically, what we're going to do is any any legends that are being introduced by this geom path are just not, not going to be shown. So we'll go Control Shift S to source that again. Okay, there we go. All right. So we have so we've got something that's looking closer to the kind of artwork we'd really like, um, but we're not all the way there yet. So instead of trying to color it by the Z dimension, what about because what about if we uh, have the color changing over time? So that we, if we to remind you, if we look again at our art dat data structure that we've built up, art data, yeah, that won't work. Art dat, there we go. We have the step ID variable, which is essentially time, or it's distance along. Uh, a line or along a path. So we can use that as the basis of our colouring. So we'll do that. So we'll colour by step ID. Okay. So we save. Source to regenerate our art. And we have something that looks pretty cool. Um, in fact, let's just go back over. So I'll make, move that over there. So there's what we've created. That was the thing that we were trying to create. That's basically, like that's starting to look like kind of the right thing, except for the fact that the color scheme is not uh, what we, um, <coughs> not, what, not what we had with the original one. Okay, so this is where I introduce you to tricks from another package. Sorry, I've forgotten what I'm doing. So we've talked, we talk a lot about tidyverse. I've given you hints about what ambient's all about. Now let's talk about psycho scientific colors. Um, it's just it's just a, just a collection of palettes. So there's lots of different ways that you can color a scientific plot. Right um, in ggplot, there are uh, hold on. Uh, um, here we go. Uh, there are scale, so if we go scale, any aesthetic has a scale associated with it. So we've got scale, color, and there's a lot of different colors that we could use. Um, I'll start out, before we do anything with Psycho, um, uh, I'll give you one that's sort of a classic, because I, and I just like using it all the time. Uh, Viridus C, um, don't need to do anything, but... All that this is going to do is change the color palette. So if we go save it, run it again, and now we've got something that kind of goes from a blue, yellow, purpley kind of color scheme, which looks kind of neat. Um, but what I'll do instead is just go scale color psycho. So the psycho scales, well, let's just save that. Let's try the, running that instead, and that gives us, ooh, okay, so that's kind of getting close. Let's have a look at that. That's kind of the browny uh, white colors. That's basically the same thing, um, except, you know, <laughs> the one that we've created has got more colors to it. Um, the Psycho package actually supplies quite a few different um, color palettes. So it has in it a function called um, psycho, sorry, uh, palette. So the tab to bring up the context menu. Uh, so you have to say these things a lot. Uh, if we could just go palette show, it will bring up a lot of different color palettes in, in uh, a plot there that you can decide what to use. Uh, I'm going to be boring for the moment and just use the gray C color scale. Um, because I want it to look like the thing in the picture. So all I have to do in ggplot is go scale. So we've, we've added a psycho scale, and then all we have to do, if I just go tab to bring up a list of the possible arguments, palette, and then I just specify the name of the, the palette. So I want I, that one over there. Um, palette equals 
gray colors. Okay, and we go uh, control source, and um, you can see that that is pretty much for all intents and purposes the same thing as the one that I've done. So we have effectively created that system. Okay, so as far as creating our plot goes, we've done uh, everything that we needed needed to do. Um, the thing that we haven't done right, is exported it from R. So I could do things like this. I could say, you know, save as image over here in RStudio. But it's kind of not the most elegant way of creating an image. At the moment, I'm just printing the picture to the, um, uh, to the plots tab. Instead, let's just delete that line. Let's talk about saving uh, data in a pro data. Saving your image in a programmatic fashion. Okay, so Control shift s s s Control shift r to give ourselves a new uh, section and we'll just say, so uh, what we'll do is we'll say save the ggplot to our PNG, so portable network graphics. I think that's what it stands for. Okay, all right. So first thing that we want to do is ask ourselves how big should this um, image be? So we'll have to specify how many pixels uh, wide it is. And I'm going to say it's going to be 3000 pixels is nice. Pixels high. Yeah, let's make that 3000. So we're going to have a square image that is 3000 by 3000 pixels in size. Then we have to give it a name. Now for now, for, for the moment, I'm just going to say file name is going to be, I'm just going to call it uh, scroll.png and I'll revisit that in a moment because um, I want to talk a little bit about the practice of naming things and I'm going to use it as an excuse to talk about some other things that matter as well. But for the moment, uh, so there's our file name. Um, now to actually save it, uh, we would want to go, so there's a nice function in the ggplot package called ggsave, right? And we can do a whole lot of things. So what we'll do is we'll say, first off, what are we going to call it? So file name is going to be, well, let's just take the, the file name from our variable file name. Okay. That's easy. We're going to ask ourselves, where do we want to save it? Now, I could do um, this thing where I go, OK, well, where are our files? So we're in this cloud location, and we're in the project folder within it. But if I pick this up, like, suppose you install this on your computer, or I put it on my local machine that is no longer in RStudio Cloud that's no longer going to be the same location, right? What I would like to be able to do is specify, is to say, hold on, I don't care where my RStudio project is on this particular machine, just save it in the same location as my RStudio project file. So please save it in the same location as project.rproj. Or, to put it conceptually uh, in a different way, save it here. Here, for an, abs for an abstract notion of here that means wherever my project is, that's where I want to save it. Okay, up at the beginning, so you'll see I've used these three packages. Gosh, I wonder whether that's what the li what library here is about. The here package provides one function, um, actually, it provides a few functions, but the one that we actually care about is called here. <laughs> so where is the path going to be? It will be to here. The nice thing about this, so let's go to the console and find out where is here anyway. So here on this machine is cloud slash project, but on my machine it's probably going to be something like user Danielle, GitHub, something, something, something. I don't know. Um, actually, forgotten 
uh, where my home directory is, but that's not the point. The point is, wherever you save it on the computer, here is the value of here is essentially is always going to be determined by the location of the corresponding RStudio project. And that's really helpful if you want your work to be robust uh, across machines. So if you want your code to work on somebody else's computer later on, here is a super helpful way of doing that. Okay, so we know where we're saving it. We're saving it here. Cool. Uh, now, we haven't said what we're going to save yet, so we better say, what are we? what is the thing we're going to save? Well, it's going to be the plot. So, at some point along the way, I quietly modified my code so that the, the variable, just go over here to the environment, the variable that's storing the, um, uh, the picture is called artpick. So the thing I want to do is plot art pick. Okay, so that's what we want to save uh, and where we want to save it. Now what we need to do is tell uh, R or tell Gigi save uh, how big it's going to be. Now when I think about images, I typically think about images in um, in pixels, like I think of it as like saying this is a three thousand by three thousand image, but some people think of um, uh, images in terms of actual physical sizes, and that's kind of like inches or centimeters or millimeters. Gigi Save uses some notion of uh, actually uses physical sizes, um, so you would by default you specify the width in inches, right? So if I want to say width of 3000. If we want something to be a 10 a 10 inch image, that's actually going to turn out to be 3000 pixels. Um, and you'll see why in a second. So for the moment, what I'm going to do is go, so we'll say, uh, we've got the width to specify, and we've got to specify the height. And these are both going to be in inches, but we also have to specify one other thing, the DPI, that is the dots per inch, or dots here is pixels, the number of pixels that you cram into in, into one inch. So I, by default, DPI is usually set to 300. I'm, that's what I'm going to do here. So now what I'm going to do is the height is equal to the pixels, um, so pixels high divided by 300 and um, so, ah, there we go and this would be pixels uh, wide divided by 300 and now we're done you wouldn't normally oh, put a comma in because there's one of those missing there we go so you wouldn't normally necessarily need to go to all of that length. You might just go width equals 10, height equals 10, DPI equals 300. That's perfectly fine. Um, I was really just using this as an excuse to talk a little bit about image sizes and things like that and the meaning of the term DPI. Okay, so we are now um, basically done. Let's have a look at um, what our code to save the image does. So we go Control shift s to source it again you notice it hasn't drawn anything uh, but if i go over here to files so like nothing come up in plot but there's this scroll.png okay let's just click on that and hey presto we have the exact image that um, uh, i used uh, to motivate this whole thing um, go away 